let me show you how you're going to be able to draw these figures in really easily yourself. I'm going to show you the steps on how I construct these figures and the kind of measurements and mental skills that I use to get them laid out the way that I want them to be. So I have here just a regular pencil. I have a whole selection of just pencils. These range in, this here is a creative mark. I have different kinds I buy, but basically it ranges in leads. And in leads you have hard and soft, right? So 7B is a very soft pencil and it will have a very dark lead. You know, um, you have HB, you have, which is a hard pencil. And so you just want to pick a lead that gives you a good result. So this is F. A lot of times HB or F, these are the pencils that you will see in like school pencils, just regular pencil lead. It's not really essential Whichever, I'm going to do 2B because I like a slightly softer pencil, but not so crazy soft that I'm just dragging graphite everywhere I go. Because I have a very heavy hand, I rest my hand a lot. Um, there's some gloves or bridges that you can get to correct for that if you're a person who does that. Um, I just am not going to do that right now. All right. So I'm going to bring this over here and talk about the construction of this piece on this Bristol piece of paper. Now, you would do this if you want to transfer your drawing onto a canvas, you would do what I've done here, which is you would create a drawing on tissue paper. I have that in the links. And then you're able to either rub graphite on the back or use transfer paper like this, which is serial transfer paper, also in the links. Now, I know that I've got this space on my canvas. These are slightly different sizes. This is a 9 by 12. This is an 11 by 14, but they're somewhat the same aspect ratio. So I don't have to um, really struggle to resize or replace. I know I've got a little figure right here somewhere in this space, and they're going to come down in this little stair step. And I need to make sure that I have enough room under my girl here that I can do my reflection work. Right? So if I'm trying to think like in my scale, if I look at it, I can look at this and go, okay, this is about the scale I'm going to be putting her in at. When I want to do my umbrella, I'm going to do that first. Sometimes I get a little stylized with my umbrella. I'm going to make a little half moon circle here, like you do. And I like to bring it down slightly longer here and a little bit flared at the side. And that kind of implies a little bit of my um, perspective that I like to have. So see how I have the little half moon there? I'm going to put my glasses on because seeing really improves drawing. <laughs> so once I have that shape in, that can kind of let me figure out where I'm going to be putting my figure and the sort of perspective it is because really the umbrella is a little bit tipped up forward. We don't see it, but we know that it's there. And so that's something that lets me know what I can see of her. Now, if her Shoulders are coming down here. I definitely like to put in the waist and I tend to exaggerate everything in my figure and I had some really wonderful lines I wanted to play with on her feet. So when I had done that, that was like the big thing that I was very, very into. And you can see I make these little light little thought lines and it's okay to do that. You don't have to like have the most perfect lines in the world. If you think about a human figure, they are anywhere from six to eight, eight heads. So if you say, okay, I got a little head up here and I'm gonna have a head there, a head for the lower body and a couple more heads down for the legs. So if I know where her bottom is, <laughs> and very rudely put that in, I can think about how this leg might come back in the walk and I'll just do the gesture of that leg. You can see I've gotten that leg kind of swung back. When I was designing that, that's sort of what I did is like, how did I want the line of this walk to happen? How did I want the line of the figure over here to cut so that we could play with this scene in the wind because she's the focus of my whole piece. I wanted her legs to be a little bit slender. So I didn't exaggerate that too much. And basically I'm gonna come down to about the midline of my leg and I kind of curve it a little bit. And I'm gonna imply a knee right here. It's sort of like a little double bump. And I'm gonna come down the shin. At where I'm going to think I'm going to put my heel, I like to make a little ball shape. I'll bring that little heel down. And then it's really interesting, when you look at the back of a heel from the straight back, you actually see the little ball of the feet coming down. It's fun because with these you can play with the um, idea that these are like Manolo, so you can make them right underneath and exaggerate that. The knee is a little bit closer in on the line and I like to put that in. And so when I put the calf out, 
you can see that I'm just going to very slenderly drag the calf down into this little ball joint here. All right? And then we're going to say that she's done squats, so I will give her some glutes. <laughs> right? She's been doing her squats. She's very fit. She's fitness minded. She's a she's an action action city dweller. Now, I want a strong cross on the front of the foot. And so I'm going to come right here. I'm going to come a little bit above this heel because she's in the middle of a step, right? And I'm going to bring my little heel down again a little bit above this one. And I almost do the very similar heel, but now I'm going to show a small amount, just a smidge. You can show a smidge of her heel or not show any part of her heel. It really is up to you, right? You can do a little implication of the toe. You've seen me do that before, right? And then you can bring the leg with the calf and you can actually, when you're trying to figure out where am I going to place things, you can draw through things while you're working out placement and then erase them later. So that's how I get something that's like, you know, a really nice exaggerated little line there. And then I can just come here and erase, and then I have that beautiful placement of legs that I really, really like. I'm gonna bring my back in and tuck this in. And I can bring this down here, and I'm gonna just say, oh, I know I'm gonna have some real flowing fabric here, but I'm gonna do most of that with paint, so I don't really have to think about that. I've got shoulders here. If I know where those are coming across, then I know I've gotta bring an elbow down. Right, but it's a little bit of a perspective here. So I create the point of the elbow. If you look at your elbow, it has a little point there. I'm gonna drag this forward. I always try to tuck my elbows and arms at about where I'm implying my waistline is. That's sort of how body proportions work. They're not always perfectly in that balance, but it's just a thing that they do. And I can take this time to refine or slenderize anything. These are gummy erasers. And they'll just pick this stuff up. There we go. So I can just play with the line of this and, and be a little bit experimentative. I know that this arm is barely showing through. It's tucked forward. So now we have her little space where she is. And we've just got to figure out that umbrella. The top of the umbrella where I'm going to want to have light, I'm going to do a little ellipse to show it. Right? We're going to do this little ellipse here. I'm gonna bring this out and exaggerate this out on both sides. And then I'm gonna just come and make some points segmentally as I'm going. I generally will have like a couple back here. And as I come along then I can sort of scallop my umbrella. You guys see the scallop? I'm gonna scallop this umbrella. Again, not having to be perfect or neat or any of that. Because right now we're thinking things out. I know I'm gonna want the top of the umbrella a little bit exaggerated peeking up so it can cast a little shadow. And this is where the lines of my segments would join. And it's okay to talk about curving, drawing those in. I think it's important to curve the line a little bit to imply the shape of the umbrella I'm doing here. So I've got that curve there thinking about all that. And if I like her placement, I feel like I have enough room for reflection. I can tuck, uh oh, I got my, my ears all coming off. I can tuck a smaller person in front of her that's mostly covered by her. And so how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna say, do I want it direct line? Do I want it to the right? Do I want it to the left? Where do I want that placement? Because we're trying to think about how, how we want those different placements. And if I wanna not have to show the body very much, I'm going to have to place it about here so I can tuck most of it in front of her. And so I'm gonna make that another one of those little half circles with a smile. Again, I know I've got my umbrella light right up there, so I'm gonna put that up and I can make my little segments along the base of that umbrella. And I can always flare if I need to. So then I've got a little person that I can hide right here. And what's wonderful is I can change any of this at any time if I need to. I can make this a little bit bigger if I want this figure to be 
a little more in hiding and I can erase that out. So it's important to understand that you've got in this sketching stage, you've got time and room to change your mind about things. Sometimes people feel like if they make a mistake, they should start over or they might sometimes feel like that their idea isn't good and they give up before they've taken it as far as it needs to be. I'm gonna just imply these little light lines here. So I've got a gentleman up ahead and sort of in the distance and he's barely even really thought about it. At this point, the rain, atmosphere, things like that have really obscured him. So his umbrella is a similar size to this one, but maybe there's a difference in the shape a little bit. I made all these similar colors. One thing I found people when they did the watercolors, they like to make them all different colors, which I think is playful and perfectly artistically acceptable. So I'm gonna just bring this right here. Make sure I've got my little smile with my half circle. When I bring him out, I'm going to just talk about his figure. So let's bring the end of his suit here. There's gonna be lots of angular shapes when I'm doing him. When I do the jacket, I'm gonna think about the folds of fabric and those shadows. So I'm gonna get the little elbow here. There's a little bit of a fold of fabric. You know, maybe this jacket is tipped down a little bit on this side. I can even make that more slender. It's basically going to be a very short little sort of triangular shape here. I'm gonna be working him into this space. Can you see the space that I'm working him into? I don't wanna to get too detailed because if I get too detailed, I will lose him. I can, however, put one leg behind the other using light. And if I want to, I can say, hey, make sure I keep a highlight there. I'm gonna need a little highlight here. And it'd be a good idea to put a highlight in here. That's gonna let me put in my top. We're almost done, actually. I'm gonna bring this over to a rib. And sometimes I can just do these in my head like this where I'm saying, oh no, we've got little ribs. So he's here. I'm gonna be able to exaggerate him in a way, like put another little reflection there, where his little light's gonna come back there. And now I've gotta have a little figure in the distance ahead of me. This person is what puts everything into scale and lets us know where objects are. So even though we're talking very abstractly, we're still going to use those skills to create a sense of space in this very expressive painting. So I'm gonna make my little smile. I'll go ahead and just very softly craft out that shape. And if you remember, we're gonna try to fit this figure into this very triangular little shape right here. So we're gonna elbow here. Or maybe there's a little distant line. And this will be almost like two little distant lines and it will all be created by these little shadows. So if I were drawing any of this in or any of my umbrella girls in and I do these all the time, that's what I would be doing to create or craft that. So if you're ever wondering like, you know, how are you getting those drawn in or how would I do that? That's how you would do that. I hope that's really helpful to you and helps you uh, take this particular painting to the place you want to take it, whether you want to use a traceable or whether you want to start working on those things where you're sketching things in. Um, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.